Welcome, everybody. I have Yao here today, who is an amazing, amazing leader in tech here in New York. And I'm so excited to have her on today's show to share a little bit about her badass journey with all of you and also just check in on what she's focused on these days. So welcome to your Badass Journey podcast, Yao. Thanks. Thanks. I would love for you to give um, just a brief overview of how you came to where you are today and share with folks what what you've been focused on as you established and founded Hatchery uh, and and just share a little bit about your journey so folks understand more about you. Um, This is a very common question I get. So I started very much similar to how everyone else starts, right? You finish college, go get a job. Uh, I got bored. And I get bored very often. And when I get bored, I want to try something a little bit more challenging. And this was at the beginning of the internet boom. So I thought, oh, this internet thing's going to be really hot. I need to get in there. <clears throat> so I started a tech company with a bunch of technical friends. And then I never went back. Um, I thought that corporate life would be a nice safety net. right? I can always go back and get a six-figure job. That's not the hard thing. But all of this entrepreneurship Back at a time when it was not sexy, it was not hot. Everyone thought that you're unemployed. <laughs> still wanting to go do it. I, I, and I, I've never turned back. I've not gone back to corporate. It's been over 20 years now. And i uh, started several companies. I've gotten to investing. And now I'm entering a whole realm of social impact. And I'm learning a lot from those who are in it of how to structure companies build companies, make revenue, but truly help others, not in just charity, but using the financial vehicles that we already have, just think about it a different way. And I've met the most clever people of figuring out this give back, do good, but without giving up profit and growth and all the traditional things that you think of in building a company. So that's where I'm at now. I love that. I, I think the that whole um, this is the whole generation, um, you know, that's coming out of college today, or even just graduating high school and wanting to figure out like the what's next, what's different, and how can I have impact versus just about earnings, has been such a an interesting topic topic as of late. And I also know that once we achieve, you know, like what we thought our corporate climb was, like even for the entrepreneurs who are who are now getting bored potentially with what they've accomplished in a corporate environment and now want to figure out how to go after their next venture or um, be in the startup game or you know have a level of impact. What advice would you give them you know in in jumping in or thinking about you know how to drive impact like you're focused on today? So think about circular, recyclable use of money. It Mm -hmm. does go down to money. Stop thinking about charitable donation and think about recycling. Mm. That's that's step one. I have to boil it down to some one word or one thought. And also, and I'll explain that in a little bit more. But secondly, don't wait until you have boatloads of money or don't wait until you're like retired and old. You're going to do the one thing on your bucket list or then to do the most impactful thing because I'm safe. You can do it the whole way through. You can actually be what you believe through your entire life and not just when you're comfortable. You know, I know yeah. it's scary. Uh, and to some, it requires some bravery. But it really isn't that. It's just... Um, thinking about others instead of yourself. And you're not going to starve to death, right? Right, right. How do you make it all work? And so when I talk about recycling, I mean, people who give money, it's nice, okay? You donated the money. uh, Here's $100 or here's a million dollars. It doesn't matter. You don't make anything back, okay? So that money now is gone. It's dead. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was used to go buy food and it's no longer. But what if you could give money so it can help others in a very similar fashion, but that then also earns a return, right? So you gave $100 and now you made $10 back somehow. I can go into that in a bit. bit. And now you have $10, which you can give again. That comes back. You can give again. It's called recycling, right? Mm -hmm. So that 
philosophy happens all day long in our regular financial uh, environments, yeah. right? There's mm-hmm. loan vehicles, right? I loan you $100, you give me $10 back. And then I will loan it to someone else and get $10 back. But I'm not considering who I'm loaning it to. I just want to make money. Mm-hmm. So you might be loaning it to someone who is um, hurting the climate or ones who are killing animals, if that's something you believe in, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so now you can take a little bit more consideration into the impact of the money that you are growing for others, the money that you are giving to others, and how that impacts the main causes that you're considering, children, women, uh, diversity, animals, water, whatever, right? right. And then that can also make money. Mm-hmm. This is a realm called social impact. Uh, social impact investing. Yes. And I think it is an area where a lot of smart people are figuring out ways for all this to work. And there's yeah. lots of examples I can give. I, I mean, I think that's, that's, I like the, I really like the term because it's tangible, you know, about the recycling financial mindset, you know, and, you know, we were, we were trained too, just like you said, very traditional, you know, go to college, get the job, put 10% towards a, a salary, like pay your taxes, you know, and there's this like old school money cycle management mindset that can totally, um, yeah, look comfortable because it's accepting to others, right? You've kind of conformed to that cycle or you could stretch yourself past that and find out like what's truly filling your heart of where that extra cash goes if it's extra or how do you turn it into an income driver with this social impact um, focus so that others are benefiting from your gains as well. And that's a a beautiful concept. I love that. And as you've been um, putting together, because I know you're like a master connector and, and you, through your company, your business, as well as how involved you are in the community, you know, how has it been Do you find that you have to like retrain the mindset a lot for acceptance in what you do? Are you finding it more, you know, the the norm now that people are thinking in this way? Oh, there's a trend towards this way of thinking. Yeah. Um, It's not mainstream yet, but it's getting there. Yeah. Right. It just makes sense. Right. You're giving most people who are giving lots of money, give a large portion as a charitable component. No. And so the part that they're trying to do good with doesn't generate a return. So it just goes away. It makes You lose all the money. And the portion of their money that makes a return could potentially hurt the same exact cause that you're trying to help. Yeah. So you just have to be more clever and think about it more dynamically. Yeah. Also, the way you describe life is very linear. And I think Traditionally, a lot of us were taught to think about life linearly, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like you said, you go to school, you get a job, you get married, you do these things in order. I'm like life doesn't happen that way. No. Life, and you're more than just one person. You're more than just a job version of you. Right. It's very dynamic, right? You have interests. You like people. You want to travel. There's all of these things. And if mm-hmm. you think about life yourself, the things you're involved with holistically, you can approach things more in a more interesting way where things can crisscross. Yeah. All right. You can actually have dinner, do business, and give all in the same 10 minutes. It doesn't have to go in sequence, go in order. And the more people think in a messy way, I think they're going to really appreciate life a lot more. Yeah. And I always say, like, you know, our journeys are like scribble on a piece of paper. <laughs> You know, like it just kind of goes like zigzag all over the place because it it isn't linear. And and if it were linear, then um, it almost is like a flat line. No, it's kind of boring. Right. It's like the flat line on a heart monitor, right? Like where's the life in it? (laughs) You know, like it doesn't have the the jump off points, those, you know, heart racing accelerated moments, which, which a lot of, you know, is the, I would say in the startup environment, you know, we thrive in that you know, in that, that energy push and pull that happens constantly because you feel alive, you know, when you're doing it as well in the, in the most, um, I know you've, you've been, you've had several companies and, and now with your focus and, and hatchery and you have other initiatives going on, what, 
What's the one thing you're, you're hyper-focused on now or super excited about that um, you'd like to share? Yeah, so there's one project that kind of pulls everything I'm interested into one. And it wasn't by accident that it ended up that way it's because I'm driving it towards the, the things I believe in and I know I believe in, so I, I drive it there. Uh, we are working on the future of human learning. Mm. I think it hasn't changed. It's moved from a paper format to a digital format, like a book to an ebook. Nothing's changed. You're still reading just on a screen. It's moved from you're learning in a classroom to learning on a video. Nothing's changed. Now it's flat on your screen, right? I think, and, and it's well studied that if you want to learn, if you want to really absorb something, you're going to need to do it. Experience, you know? You don't just read about riding a bike. You actually ride a bike, you fall off, you do it again, right? So we think we can have people learn by doing without leaving their chair mm. using virtual reality and with an AI component embedded. Basically, we're going to make life happen for real inside VR where you're talking to people, they're talking back to you. And now you can learn, use it to learn English Use it to learn how to be a good leader. You learn, use it to learn how to sell. You can use it to learn how to remove stress and anxiety from your life. And we can put you into each of these experiences, see how you behave, see how you are. So you can actually go through before you actually go through it in real life. Practice life before it happens, virtually. And each of them have ways in which we can create by rolling out these learning models inside corporations and in schools. Mm -hmm. We can bring parity for women in the workplace, mm -hmm. uh, removing the bias and promotions. We can get people access to jobs around the world uh, by learning English. Uh, mental health is a big problem. Yeah. And we like to help people achieve balance and ease and maybe even happiness by dealing with stress and anxiety. Three quarters of people with depression don't even get that help. Right. So I think we can solve these kind of problems using the foundational tools of VR and AI combined. And we are rolling this out in multiple countries. We have so many leaders as partners. Um, and the impact this creates, along with potential revenue, is amazing. And then it's how do we spend that money? You know, we don't want to buy Ferraris. Maybe we want to set up a microfinance fund. Maybe we want to create, you know, very low interest loans for students to go to school and recycle it so that it can sustain and help others. I think I, you know, it's such a great um, evolution of of learning that you're um, putting together this platform and the ability for others who are in the space, you know, to also up level into different methods and, and reach audiences that they wouldn't otherwise, you know, I mean, even the, like the e-courses and the, the online experience, like you said, it's very flat and that interaction is, is a gap, you know, you, you would like, I mean, I even have like an online course and then I, I do the interaction with, you know, a chat group in order to get like the, the, to give them something, but it's never the same as if I'm in the room with them yeah. and training and having that interaction, you know, through a face-to-face -face workshop, but I cannot get to all the locations, you yeah. know, that, that want me, let's say, or, and the expense of that too can go up high exactly. where that money could actually then pay it forward or create that um, social impact, you know, that I would love to have as well. And so I think that's, I, I mean, I, I, when you shared this platform with me a few months back and, and the drive you have is so, um, focused, which I love because it's the only way things kind of come to fruition is if you, if you have that focus and determination and I'm, I mean, it's just so exciting to see how it is coming together. And I know it's going to be the new way of learning, you know, um, as well as, just I can only imagine the income engine behind it because it's going to be in in such high demand, you know, yep. as you get it out there, and that's really cool. Uh, when it when it came to you, the actual idea, the concept, the you know realm of actually focusing in this way, what what was going on like that made you say yes? 
the direction you want to focus on now. You know, like, logic. I saw it and like, this is the future. Yeah. No one else saw it. Hmm. And it just seems so logical, right? If there was a technology for me to recreate you, it's like you're saying, it's expensive to get you everywhere, right? I can yeah. recreate you. Yeah. And then you do work. And then now I can have that technology, that AI, be you. Yeah. And then just start thinking about every, every kind of example of places where humans could be replicated for scale, mm-hmm. right? Teacher, teaching, right? That of people that you can't access. Would you love to learn leadership from President Obama? Right? Lots of people would, but I can't get you to him. Right. But let me recreate him for you. Yeah. Right? In a dynamic way. So you can talk to him for real. Mm-hmm. Would you like Tiger Woods to teach you golf? Would you like... You know, a world leader to show you um, social impact. You know, would you like a Harvard professor to teach you English, right? But you can't get to him normally. Mm -hmm. If I just saw that, when I saw the technology, I immediately thought recreating people. Yeah. And then scaling learning because of this interaction. I knew it right away, right? Um, Others need to be... uh, led along the way a little bit more with more information. And it could be because they haven't been in this space before. They haven't been in technology to see where imagination could go. Maybe they haven't read the articles about um, learning or depression or leadership or bias or what the problems really are. Um, I've lived it, right? And so for a lot of these areas, I really viscerally know the issues of women, right? I have traveled to places. I know the impact of just simply learning English and what it does for your career, right? You're no longer the janitor. You could be at the front desk at the hotel and then maybe the manager of the hotel. And what if I can use um, uh, a shared marketplace of companies that want good English speakers in, say, the US, Mm -hmm. pay you $5 an hour, it can actually be more than the average salary in your country. Right, right. Or, right? So just learning this language and how can I help you do that? And how can I get you these jobs? Simple things. But that's what technology can do. And I saw this when I saw the technology. Yeah. And that's it's beautiful. I can, I can visualize too the accessibility you're creating. Uh, you know, saying that like it's, it's very difficult if you want to be trained by a top leader, like how do you get in front of them? You know, yeah. and and also um, the turnaround time. So what I find com- complex still today, which I don't think it should be, and I find myself saying a lot lately, that's so played. Like, why is it still that way? That is so played right now. I don't know why, but that seems to be like the language going on in my head when I, and that just might be my age. I don't know. <laughs> the point being is that um, I I I look at things like. People invest so much in showing up for trainings and um, and or online courses or education or even you know like you said like learning English etc. But then the applicability of it is so delayed. You know, it's like they're not also being taught how do you get into action? How do you how do you um, put it into play? And what's great about VR and AI and the experience that you're providing is that you're actually also giving like the the physical um uh feeling as well as the emotional understanding in practice which is i would say like the hardest thing for people to find arenas where they're accepted to fumble you know and they're accepted to trip up up on themselves as they're learning something new and so it also you're creating that space for them when when they come out of the environment though i'm curious um, as you've gone through this with different arenas, um, how is it then put into action in the everyday life? You know, are you seeing any difference there in any of your users or what the feedback has been? Yeah, so it really depends on the vertical. Mm. So learning English, your English should improve, right? So for example, places like China, they still come out with an accent because they're surrounded by that accent. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you take a person, you move them here and they live here and they grew up here, like you sound like me, like I look Chinese, but I have this weird Jersey accent, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right? I understand so it, yeah. How did that happen? Well, I grew up here. I listen to people here. But what if I could bring that to you without you getting on a plane? 
Right. Right. So that's the direct impact. In, impact. You can actually sound more natural, and then maybe that improves your job opportunities because you speak better English. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, that is absolutely the case there. Yeah. Good English speakers get uh, executive roles. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, in leadership, you learn how to be a good leader by doing something, right? So usually people, you don't have a place to practice. You're taught things, you read a book, you sit in a classroom, but then go ahead and do your life. And then you may not come across the circumstance for another six months. Mm-hmm. And hopefully you remember what you're supposed to do, right? Like maybe not touch women in certain ways or not <laughs> yell at people, right? So yeah. you, maybe you can't remember. It's like, right. oh, did a bad thing as a leader. Right, so now you can practice. Mm-hmm. So maybe you can have muscle memory as to how you're supposed to behave. Yeah, and what leads to good leaders? The, the 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 impact of what your decisions are. Maybe you don't know. Oh, when I do this thing, this bad thing happens. Shouldn't do that anymore. Right, right. right. The cause uh, and effect, and that's yeah. what practice does. I mean, letting people practice in real life, but virtually. Yeah. Um, in mental health, um, we've already done these trials where. You go into this VR, we use awe as a way to get you happier. I can get you happy in a session. You feel great. People come out like, wow, this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Give me enough time and I can treat you without medication. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Huge. Right? Yeah. I mean, you don't want to take a, take a Xanax every day. It's like, Let me calm you down in a different way. Right. Like, put right. the headset on. Very Learn simple. New techniques. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's what's the real impact of all of this. You know, you're, you're, I'm, you're, I'm giving you an experience every time you put the headset on that completely changes what you know, how to be, and your life. Yeah, I think it's great. I'm excited to see how it evolves. And I know so many are going to benefit from it. Uh, I also know that's not all that you do. Yeah. <laughs> and there's so many different facets to you as well. So um, I know you love to network and connect. And tell me a little bit about the organization um, that you also uh, lead and run, which is um, the Wonder Woman Dinners. Yeah. So that started uh, almost 12 years ago now, Mm. uh, when a lot of women started saying, I'm the only one blank. Mm. I'm the only one on my floor. I'm the only one in my company. I'm the only one. By myself, I need a network, especially as women rise, mm. it gets thin up there. And so I said, All right, come to dinner. Let's grab dinner. I grabbed a few, few girlfriends. My friends tend to be CEOs and investors. And we just started talking, having dinner like girlfriends. But what naturally happened there was bonding. Mm. And then as life happens, now you're friends. And then you support your friends in life and career and work. And everyone started inviting other people. So we did this once a month in New York. And now, fast forward 12 years, it's in 13 cities once a month, and 20 women gather just to have dinner. And we've built a tremendous bond where everyone helps each other, and we help each other rise. But not using the networking word. Right. Right? Networking in New York is like, what's your name? Who are you? What do you do? Here's my business card. It's so boring. (laughs) So like, there's no connection there. So I've been slowly teaching people to relax, put your cards away. And do you know how to make a friend? Try that first, right? <laughs> yeah. Why do you want to grab a glass of wine instead of the card? Just mm-hmm. relax. Yeah. Be what you would be like near a friend. And these dinners are where people eat, we laugh, we bond, and that's it. There's no agenda. Yeah. And off of that, tremendous help has happened without even discussing it. I think women do that best. And some people raise an eyebrow, like, I don't get it. How do we, what do I get out of this time? Like, probably not for you then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? You don't have to yeah. get something every minute. No, life, exactly. You know? Exactly. It's yeah. Come. It's very yeah. karmic driven. Yes. 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 I mean, I love the, the relational aspect of it because that's how it should be you know like that's how we should be connecting on a on yes. a daily it's like what do you go what's going on with you what are you struggling on with like you know or what brings you joy or what's the latest you know whatever activity you've tried and it's not about like the what can i sell you and how can you help me and you know just getting so dry about it again it's so played like that. <laughs> it's like 
exactly like what's been going on in my head that the old school way of trying to make a connection it's just so um so superficial you know and and i love that uh you create these environments where where women can come together and and relate and connect and just see where it goes you know from a even just having one fun night and i know the amount of laughter you must create at these dinners <laughs> because of the humor that you have and um and then i think i also saw in your in your tedx talk that you were you actually did comedy on broadway like was that yeah, yeah. 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 comedian yeah. yeah it's so smart i mean that's so great like you know just explore what you're interested in which is yeah and come together and share it i love that well as we um as we close out today's conversation i always like to ask my guests you know if they were to define what a badass is um what words you would you choose how would you describe a badass oh dear uh courage you know the ability to speak your mind um and the willingness to help lots of others showing others the way it's not just about you Badass doesn't mean I'm a badass. I'm a badass because there's sharing involved, right? And yeah. therefore, you're you're at the on the top of something, not just the biggest thing. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And then, if folks want to connect with you or you know um, learn more about Hatchery, learn more about your latest ventures, how would you like them to connect with you? I just go to our website. At trade.vc. Great. Let me connect that way. Well, I appreciate your time today, Yao. Of course, I'm sure it'd be one of many conversations we have going forward. This has been great to be able to share a small piece of you because I know what a large life you have with our listeners. And um, thanks for being with us today. Great. Thanks. 